everyone, I'm Monty Chirangi. I enjoy reading stories and listening to them too, just like you. And guess what? I found this Sesame Street Library collection, which I liked to read when I was little, and I thought I'd share some of my favorites with you. Are you ready? Let's begin. This story is from the Sesame Street Library, Volume 11. The King's Nose. King Marvin the Magnificent was very grand indeed. He said, I'm magnificent. His subjects all agreed. King Marvin is magnificent. Our kingdom is most blessed. Of all the kings who ever were, King Marvin is the best. Now, in King Marvin's kingdom lived a little boy named Paul, whose favorite thing was playing with a bright pink rubber ball. He bounced his rubber ball all day against the palace gate. He started in the morning and he stayed till it grew late. One day as he was playing ball, he stopped and said, I know. I think I'll throw my rubber ball as high as it will go. So Paul wound up and threw the ball with one tremendous fling. Oh no, he cried. It's headed for the window of the king. Smash went the royal window. And before the king could duck, the ball bounced off King Marvin's throne and hit his nose and stuck. What is this thing? said Marvin, as he felt the ball and sneered. But before he could remove it, his prime minister appeared. King Marv! cried the prime minister. A rubber ball? How cute! It really is magnificent. I'll get one for my snoot. And like a flash, he left the room and what do you suppose? When he returned, a rubber ball was stuck upon his nose. The news spread quickly through the land. The kingdom was quite small. Soon on each person's nose, there was a bright pink rubber ball. The butcher and the baker and the driver of the bus all said, if Marv likes, likes it, it then, then it's good, good enough, enough for us. Don't, Don't we look great? The people cried. Our noses are so pleasing, except it's rather hard to smell and even harder sneezing. But everyone was happy, the whole kingdom filled with joy. For everyone had a ball, except for one small boy. Oh, woe, cried Paul. Without my ball, I really am so sad. I'll ask the king to give it back. I hope he won't be mad. Paul tiptoed to the throne room where King Marvin was alone. The king in his magnificence sat on his royal throne. Young Paul knelt down before the king and then he was told to rise. But when he lifted up his head, a strange sight met his eyes. King Marvin wore an ermine cloak, silk slippers on his toes. A golden crown was on his head and a ball was on his nose. Then Paul began to giggle and he laughed till he was sore. And pretty soon he laughed so hard he fell down on the floor. What's so funny, said King Marvin, as he saw that Paul was staring. It's your nose, cried Paul with laughter. That's my favorite toy you're wearing. My nose looks great, King Marvin said. Said Paul, I beg to differ. You really do look silly with that ball stuck in your sniffer. I do, exclaimed King Marvin. Bring my royal mirror quick. King Marvin looked. He saw himself. And what he said was, Eek! 
I really do look silly, and I knew it from the first. I've always said that rubber balls or noses are the worst. The king took off the rubber ball and handed it to Paul. You've taught me a great lesson, so I'll give you back your ball. Then the butcher and the baker and the driver of the bus said, "If, if Mark gave his ball away, away that's, that's good enough, enough for us." The people of the kingdom gave their rubber balls away, and they all have worn their noses plain right to this very day. So from early in the morning time until it grows quite late, Paul has a hundred balls to bounce against the palace gate. Now this story has a moral, and it's very, very true. If a king does something silly, you don't have to do it too. The end.